Hey, good morning. This is Doug, your realtor here in Utah. And I've just been on a filming spree this morning. <laughs> so anyway, um, I wanted to talk about a couple of harder transactions that happen and that I've been through and, and kind of how, how we walk through and navigated. Um, <clears throat> one of the ones that I would, first I, I wanted to talk through is I had a lady that really wanted her own house. The only way she could do it was to do what's called an assumption loan um, to where she was going to go in and assume the interest rate and things of that nature. She had a, a they she'd give some money to the sellers, but that she would assume the loan. Well, <clears throat> everybody talks about it and it's like, oh, that's super easy. You just do this and this and this. And, you know, it, it's amazing how many people that if they haven't done it, been through it, you know, it, it's super easy. Well, the biggest thing is, is that the mortgage company, the seller's mortgage company has to approve the buyer. Well, and that's great. And it doesn't take that long, but the, the seller's mortgage company, you know, if their interest rate, the interest rate was at like 4% and the current market rate interest rates at 7%, they don't want it. They don't want to keep the the mortgage at four percent. They want you to sell it, and then they'll refinance it at seven, so that they get more money. It's all money driven. We get. I get it. So anyway, so with this uh, particular uh, lady, we we sat there and we had to. She had to go through a phone a phone interview. Well, the phone so. We go under, let's back up. So we go under contract, um, <clears throat> The she gets all the documents in so that she can have access to the, and be added onto the mortgage. Okay, great. So we're, step one's done. Step two, she has to go through a phone interview first before they even look at the documents. Even though they have all the documents, they have, <clears throat> and so in order to do that, it's, it was kind of like going to the doctor, you know, it's like, oh, hey, I need a foot specialist. Okay, well, we're, we're six weeks out before you can get an appointment. Well, I need the appointment today. No, no, no. Anyway, so yeah, so she was about six weeks out for that appointment. And then, you know, the, the mortgage company just kept one thing after another. Well, we need this and we need that. The kicker to everything to me was the mortgage company wanted her or wanted the sellers to print off the a receipt of their mortgage showing that the mortgage is paid in current. But they hold the mortgage. Really? Come on. Anyway, so all of this stuff goes through. We we everybody holds everybody holds tight. The sellers were awesome because they they could have gotten tired of it, but they didn't. Um, we we kept everybody in the loop, kept everybody moving. And, you know, six months later, almost to the day, we were able to get her closed to where now she's in that, that home at a great interest rate. So assumable loans are, are a great talking point. Um, they're not just as easy as, you know, step in, step out, but they're definitely something that's doable. So. That was one, a transaction that was really hard on <clears throat> that end. Um, sometimes transactions uh, and, and selling properties, we're going to go to selling now, can be just because of something that's gone on. One of my very first transactions that I did had a unique house. And when I say a unique house, it was unique because it's what they call a, a front back split. So it's not a, a, a split entry. You actually walk in the house, there's a living, a living area in the kitchen, and then you go th through that, and then there's a staircase. If one goes up, one goes down. So it's a front back split. Um, <clears throat> so, but the, in the living room in that kitchen, the wall there is about 20 feet tall. I mean, so it, it goes clear to the peak of the, the house and um, really is kind of cool. The house that we were selling, the the family there 
<clears throat> they had gone through and painted that wall, that 20 foot wall. Um, they had painted it with kind of that gold kind of color and then took the sponge technique from, you know, early 2000s, late 90s and gone through and done a dark brown kind of over this, this gold yellow color all over the wall. Um, so that was there. <clears throat> but then they also took like a genealogy tree and had everything back generations of pictures up this wall of, you know, here's grandma, great grandma, great grandpa, you know, great, 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 great. It was phenomenal to see. It, it really was. It was beyond f fantastic that they took that kind of time and energy to be able to do that, you know, an for ancestry. However, in, in the real estate world, what happens is from a psychology standpoint, when a buyer walks in the door, they don't want to feel like they're intruding on you. And so when you have all of your stuff, you know, whether it's your collections, your pictures, your family photos, you know, all those types of things, they feel like they're intruding on you. So they, it, they're not comfortable. So that's why a lot of times when they say you're sta you to sell the house, you want to stage it. You want to eliminate all the personal out of it so that that way, you know, when they walk in, it's like, oh, okay, I, there's the couch, there's the TV, I, this is comfortable, there's a kitchen. You know, they're not seeing all the collectibles, you know, when in one that had elephants everywhere. And I mean, you know, little ones, big ones, trunks of elephants were lamps, uh, you know, it, people that don't understand that collectible or don't, don't have the same love of elephants, um, it, it just, it causes mental kind of a, a psychology and a psychological crash inside the buyer. So go back to this house, <clears throat> genealogy everywhere, um, <clears throat> pictures and stuff. And then we have the, the wall. Well, we, we did some showings and when you walked in the door, you were met with that wall. That was the first thing you saw. And so we we do, oh, I do some open houses. I do different things that way. And <clears throat> there was just nothing happening. People would come in and they, they you could tell they just kind of got uncomfortable right away. So after a lot of talking with the, the seller, got them to bring that down. And so they brought all the, the ancestors, boxed them up, because they're going to have to box them up and take it down anyway if, to sell the house and move, right? So they do that, and then, you know, it's interesting because now we've got this wall that's yellow, gold, and brown, and sponge techniques. Anyway, that wall is like she is like her baby. You know, she did that. She wanted that up there. She did, you know, and it's like, can we paint it? I mean, I, I offered to paint it. Not supposed to, but I offered. Anyway, but it was like, no, she wanted that up there. We, we had the house on the market for over almost a year. Everybody that walked through that front door was just like, oh. Now, why? Let's go to the why. So many times we don't get the why part of this. Well, the why is, is so if you're buying a house and you walk in and you sit there and you go, oh, well, the house is, is pretty decent. <clears throat> but now I've got it, but I've got to paint that wall because that wall is, is not something that I could live with. Psycho psychologically, what happens is if there's this and they see that as a problem, the buyers are going to go look for other problems. Oh man, they've got, you know, blue in the linoleum on the floor. That's so dated. Um, the carpet is you know, it's got a little fray over here. Oh, I've got to replace the carpet. So then from the buyer's standpoint, they they just sit there and they just like ching, ching, ching. They just see the dollars going up. And so even though you've got a good price at the house, the buyers are seeing the extra twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 and the time that they've got to be able to do to be able to get into the house. That's the problem. It is that is 
So when you're selling a house, you, you don't want to be able to, you don't want to have to have people do that. And so if you have, you know, accent walls that are, you know, bright red, I've seen those. Um, <clears throat> anyway, maybe a, a quick coat of, of primer and just some, you know, mid-range color to where just tone it down would be a really smart thing to do if you're selling. So finish the story, right? So trying, trying, and it got to be where the, she was just adamant that I wasn't doing my job because, you know, I couldn't sell it with the, you know, brown sponge stuff on the wall. Um, and, and I mean, hours trying to sell it, thousands of dollars trying to sell it. So what I do, you know what? I shook her hand and I said, you know, there's gotta be somebody else that can help you more than me. And that was, that was a hard thing to walk away, from, especially with all the money I spent to help market and stuff that way. But as soon as I, I walked away, it was, it sure took a load off of my, sh my shoulders. And then to finish the story, it took them three more real estate agents and almost a year and a half to be able to sell that. And I don't know if they ever painted that wall. But anyway, there's a couple of stories about harder transactions. Um, and there's, there's all kinds of different ones that can go through there. But you know what? If you get a second, like my page, share my page, uh, follow me. I, I'd love to be able to, to help you. Call me if you need real estate stuff. Anyway, welcome to Utah.